Have you ever cheaped out on buying something because you wanted to be frugal and save money only to end up wasting money instead? I know there's been more than a few times where I've done that myself, which is why today I wanted to share a list of 10 frugal things that can actually waste your money if you're too cheap. And make sure to stick around until the end of the video because I'm sharing a huge frugal mistake that could cost you tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're not careful. And I'm speaking from personal experience because this almost happened to us. And if we hadn't known better, we might have lost $40,000 or more. And first up on this list, we have cheap toilet paper. So the other day I asked my husband to buy toilet paper from the store, which is something that I usually do myself, but he just happened to be going to the store that day. But trust me, I will not be making that mistake again because he came home with a huge package of the cheapest, lowest quality toilet paper you could ever imagine. And I mean, it was so bad that even my kids noticed and complained how bad it is. And they're the kind of guys who can head out to school and forget to put their glasses on. So for them to notice and complain, that's pretty bad. And I'm sure that a lot of people who are super frugal, like my husband, might look at nicer toilet paper and think, I'm not gonna pay a bunch of money for something that's literally getting flushed down the toilet. But the thing is that cheaper toilet paper is a lot thinner and less absorbent than more expensive brands. And you don't end up saving as much money as you thought you would because the poor quality means you need to use more paper to achieve the same results. Plus it's just not as comfortable on your skin. If you wanna save money, there are a lot better ways to go about it than giving your butt the sandpaper treatment. So when it comes to nicer toilet paper, feel free to treat yourself and go with the good toilet paper. Next up on this list, we have homemade coffee. And I think that the advice to make coffee at home is some of the most generic frugal living advice there is out there. And almost everyone talks about how you should stop buying takeaway coffee and make your own coffee at home and you can save hundreds of dollars a year. But what a lot of people aren't talking about is there is a right way and a wrong way to go about making coffee at home. I know several people who have purchased Keurigs with the intention that they were going to start making coffee at home in order to save money. But what they didn't realize is that having a Keurig is up to four times more expensive as compared to making simple drip coffee at home. So when it comes to making homemade coffee, don't go for a Keurig if your intention is to save money. And also buying cheap or low quality coffee beans can be a lot less satisfying compared to more expensive brands that taste better. No one should have to force themselves to choke down bitter coffee just for the sake of saving a few bucks. When it comes to being frugal and saving money, I think it's important to do it in a way that doesn't leave a bad taste in your mouth. Which is why I wanted to tell you about the partner of today's video, Mint Mobile, and their sweet deal that's been saving me a ton of money. Mint offers premium wireless service for as low as $15 a month, and for that price, you get the same speed, coverage, data, and access to the nation's largest 5G network that you've been paying to big wireless, but for a fraction of the cost. So that you no longer have to drink coffee flavored with the salty tears of your bitter regret for overpaying on your monthly phone plan. <sighs> now that's how saving money should taste. Switching to Mint is super easy, and thanks to their digital eSIM cards, you can sign up and get activated immediately right from the comfort of your own home. And if your phone doesn't have eSIM card capabilities, don't worry, because as part of their deal, Mint will ship you a brand new SIM card for free. I'm so glad I took 15 minutes out of my day to switch to a Mint mobile plan last year because every month I get to watch those extra savings add up in my bank account on autopilot. So if you're ready to start saving as well, go to our partner, trymintmobile.com slash A to Zen life to get premium wireless for as low as $15 a month. Or you can click the link down in the description box below. And thanks again to Mint for partnering with me to bring you today's video. Number three on this list, we have cheap shoes, which can lead to serious foot and leg problems. I don't particularly think of myself as a very delicate person, but for some reason I have really sensitive feet. So I have really high arches and they need a lot of support. And then also for some reason my skin 
seems to get irritated and rubbed and can bleed very easily. And there have been several times in the past where I've cheaped out on shoes and then I put them on and head out for a walk. And after walking 30 minutes, I realize that they have rubbed the back of my heels to the point where they're bleeding, or maybe they've caused my toes to start blistering because they're rubbing the skin in between. So shoes are something that is worth investing in and you want to take the time to find good shoes that are not only going to look good, but also be comfortable. Next up on this list, we have cheap kitchen knives. Cheap kitchen knives don't last as long and they can be dangerous. They slip during use, which can lead to cuts. Good quality kitchen knives last longer and are better able to keep a nice sharp edge. So it's worth investing in some nice, sharp, good quality kitchen knives for your kitchen. Number five on this list is stuff that's on sale. And this is a huge trap that a lot of people, including myself, fall into. So if you weren't looking for something in the first place and you find yourself tempted to buy it just because you don't want to miss out on a good deal and you feel like you're saving money by buying it at that point, what we need to realize is that when we buy things that we don't need to save money, we're not actually saving money. We're actually wasting money because we didn't need that thing in the first place. And then we're spending money to acquire it that we didn't need to spend. So remember to say to yourself, I save 100% off things when I buy nothing. The thing about sales is they always come around again. And so it's unlikely that you're never going to have another chance to save money on that thing. So the next time you see something and you're tempted to buy it because it's a great deal, it's on sale or whatever reason, just write it down in a list and think about it for a little bit. And then you kind of pull yourself back from that FOMO feeling and give yourself time to decide, hmm, do I really want that thing? And maybe you don't want it at all. And in case you save yourself the money and you save yourself unwanted clutter coming Coming into your home. Number six on this list is cheap furniture. Cheap furniture can be uncomfortable and can break easily. And then if it is either of those things, at that point, that means that you're going to have to go out and buy a different piece of furniture to replace that item, which might mean that you end up spending more money than you would have spent in the first place had you simply purchased good quality furniture. Number seven on this list is mattresses and pillows. And because humans spend basically a third of our lives sleeping, it really pays to invest in high quality mattresses and pillows for sleep because sleep affects everything from our physical health and how much energy and how our back feels and how we can move throughout the day to our mental health. Speaking of which, I'm actually not that happy with the mattresses that we have in this house because it's super soft. I personally prefer a mattress that's a little bit harder. And I know that some of you have mentioned that you do as well. So I'd love to know, are you team hard mattress or team soft mattress? Drop me a comment down below and let me know what kind of mattress do you prefer to get a good night's sleep and if you have any particular brands that you think are really good. Next up, we have spending related to hair care and grooming. So anything that's like haircuts, hair coloring, and grooming of the lashes or brows or whatever. Now, if this is something that you know how to do at home, more power to you, but I have had some really bad experiences where I tried to cut or color my hair myself at home. And I have also had very bad experiences where I cheaped out on these things with terrible results. I've shared before how I lost like half of an eyebrow to some really bad eyebrow waxing services. And I actually shared a story about a dye job that left me with chemical burns on my scalp in this video that I'll link up here and down in the description box below for you, where I talked about seven purchases I thought that would make me happy, but didn't. Both my husband and I know how to cut our children's hair, but when it comes to cutting our own hair or each other's hair, we're just not quite at that level. So I don't get my hair cut that often, maybe once or twice a year, but when I do get it cut, I make sure to choose a good stylist at a nice salon who has good reviews. So for me, that's money that is well spent. Number nine on this list of frugal things that can actually end up wasting you money if you're not careful is home renovations and inspections. So 
I would like to share a little story of a personal experience that we had when we were looking to buy a home back in New Jersey. And we had actually looked at buying a home that was really close to a famous house called the Westfield Watcher House. I don't know if you've heard of it. It was in the news there for a while, a few years ago. And then they also made a movie about it. And it's this house that basically a uh, family purchased for quite a lot of money and then when they moved into the house they started getting some creepy letters so the house that we were looking at wasn't quite on the same street as that house but it was pretty close it was like in the same neighborhood right so that's kind of just a little bit of background about it but the real story is that when we were looking at this house to purchase I was kind of feeling a little bit resentful about all of the money that we were having to pay for home inspections for things like looking for underground oil tanks and checking the roof and checking the plumbing and everything else on a house that we didn't even own yet. And I was a little bit feeling like, is this a waste of money? But as it turns out, home inspection is really, really important. And in fact, if we hadn't had our fabulous home inspectors, we wouldn't have known that the people, when they renovated this house, cheaped out on their renovation so badly that the people who did the bathroom renovation in the upstairs vented the bathroom humidity and all of the air straight into the attic with no ventilation to the outside. So all of the hot, moist air was just going up from the bathrooms straight into the attic without being able to escape in any way. So basically the way that our roofing ex inspector explained it to us was it was probably so humid inside that roof that it was like raining inside of the roof and the nails were all rusted, there was mold, the entire thing was gonna to have to be replaced and it was going to cost at minimum $40,000. And this was a really new roof and a really recent bathroom renovation and basically these people ended up just wasting a whole lot of money not choosing contractors who could do the proper renovations. Obviously, we didn't feel like we should be on the hook for paying for a new roof when it was the previous owners that had done this and we felt that they should be responsible for replacing the roof. And so when we were negotiating back and forth, they weren't willing to come down far enough to agree to our terms. And therefore, because of the contract, we were able to walk away from that deal a few thousand dollars getting these home inspections, but it was totally worth it because it saved us tens of thousands of dollars from making the mistake of buying a house that we didn't realize was going to need some major renovations and work done. So I mean, if you're handy, your husband is handy, you have a handy family and they know what they're doing for renovations, you can go for it. But I would say be really, really careful about who you choose to do renovations in your home. And if you're looking to buy a home like we are again, make sure you don't cheap out and find a really good home inspector for each of the different things that needs inspected in your area. And finally, number 10 on this list is too much clutter. No one goes out and buys things with the intention of wasting money and not liking something, right? We buy things because they make promises to us and we bring them into our homes because we expect them to make our lives better or simpler or fulfill some kind of gap or promise in some way. But then when those things don't live up to our expectations for whatever reason, maybe we end up not liking them or they didn't work as well as they should or maybe we used it for a little while, but we haven't used it in years and now it's just sitting around in the corner collecting dust. We feel hesitant to let go of those things because we don't want to waste money. But the thing about it is, is the money was spent when you purchased the item. It's not wasted when you get rid of the item. And actually it's holding on to things that you don't use and you don't even want or need in your home that is the real money and space waster. Because a lot of these things are sitting around taking up extra cabinet space, taking up extra space in our garage, taking up extra storage space in our basements. And they're also taking up space in our minds as we think about our guilt for having these things, even though we don't really want them. 
So if you find yourself in the position where you have too much clutter and you haven't used it for a long time, you don't have a space for it, it might be a good time to consider getting rid of those things and clearing out that space. And like I said, just remember the money was wasted when we purchased the item, not when we get rid of the item. And actually you're doing yourself and someone else a favor getting rid of those items and passing them on, maybe to give someone else the new chance to enjoy them. And if you're ready to clear out some extra space in your home and get rid of those unwanted clutter items, here's a list of 100 things you can start with right now, or I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.